In this video, we're going to demonstrate DNP3 Secure Authentication Version 5 and user management via a DNP3 authority. So here we have the distributed test manager simulating a master talking to two different outstations, outstation 1 and outstation 2. And the DTM is also simulating those two outstations. Now let's bring up the DNP3 authority and we see the DNP3 authority is connected to that master and knows about the two outstations and we've defined three users Dave, Jim, and Joe. Dave is defined as a viewer Jim and Joe are both defined as operators. Now let's map Jim to outstation 1 and when we do we see a series of messages beginning with the secure authentication user status change as the master sends the user status change message down to outstation 1. Let's assign Joe to outstation 2 and again we see the user status change sequence but this time it's to outstation 2. And now let's assign Dave to both outstations. And again we see the user status change messages as Dave is assigned. So now Jim can operate outstation 1, Joe can operate outstation 2, and Dave can monitor both outstations but can't send any controls. So now let's see that in action. If we go to the DTM, go to outstation 1 and we're going to send a CROB command We'll send the latch on command and we can choose one of the assigned users. Let's choose Jim since he's assigned to be able to send controls. He's an operator. Say OK. And we see that the command succeeded. Now let's send another CROB command, but this time let's send it by Dave. Remember, Dave's a viewer. Let me clear the log and then we'll send the message from Dave or try to send the message from Dave. And we see that the command fails because of the challenge reply because Dave is a viewer and not allowed to send controls. And notice we have an error message now telling us that the CROB command failed. Let's clear that error and go take a look at outstation 2. And again, we can send the CROB command. We'll send the latch on. If we send it by Joe, the operator, the command succeeds. But if we send the CROB command from Dave, the viewer, the command fails. So now let's suppose that Jim didn't complete his proper training certification and so he is downgraded from an operator to a viewer. Again we see the user status change messages updating that change in his authority. And let's go ahead and assign Joe to outstation 1 so that someone can control this outstation. And again, we see those user status change messages. So now if we try to send a CROB command here on outstation 1, if we send it from user Jim, who's been downgraded to a viewer, it fails. But we do have the option now to send the message from Joe because he's been added as a user and an operator to this outstation. And here we see the command passed. So now let's say Jim regains a certification. We'll make him an operator again. But let's suppose Joe leaves the company. 
So we're going to remove Joe and we can even remove Joe from the list of users. And now when we go to execute a command, Joe is no longer in the user list, but Jim once again is able to execute the command. So this is a very simplified example, but it does show some of the power of being able to control users and user permissions via a DNP3 authority with DNP3 SAV5. Note that all of the user updates were done securely without having to drive out to the substation or have direct access to the devices.